tetanus. Tetanus is now a rare disease in the Western world, thanks to a comprehensive immunization policy. In the developing world, it remains prevalent with a mortality of up to 60%. Pathology. Tetanus is caused by Clostridium tetani, an anaerobic, exotoxin-secreting, gram-positive bacillus. It is characterized by formation of a terminal spore, drumstick, and is a normal inhabitant of soil and feces. The bacillus remains at the site of inoculation and produces a powerful exotoxin, tetanospasmin. Tetanospasmin principally affects inhibitory neurons that secrete gamma-aminobutyric acid GABA and glycine. By blocking the inhibitory effects of these neurons, there is unopposed excitatory activity from motor and autonomic neurons. Motor effects include increase in muscle tone, with rigidity and reflex. Spasms. Autonomic effects include sympathetic overactivity with tachycardia, increased cardiac output, and reduced vascular tone. Tetanus follows the implantation of spores into a deep, devitalized wound where anaerobic conditions occur. Infection is related less to the severity of the wound than to its nature, thus, an extensive injury that has received early an adequate wound toilet is far less risky than a contaminated puncture wound that has been neglected. Clinical feature. The incubation time is 24h to 24 days, the initial injury often being trivial and forgotten. Muscle spasm. First develops at the site of inoculation and then involves the facial muscles and the muscles of the neck and spine. As a rule, it is the trismus of the facial spasm producing the typical rhesus sardonicus that is the first reliable indication of developing tetanus. This may be so severe that it becomes impossible for the patient to open his or her mouth lockjaw. The period of spasm is followed, except in mild cases, by violent and extremely painful convulsions, which occur within 24 to 72 h of the onset of symptoms and may be precipitated by some trivial stimulus, such as a sudden noise. The convulsions, like the muscle spasm, affect the muscles of the neck, face and trunk. Characteristically, the muscles remain in spasm between the convulsions. The temperature is a little elevated but the pulse is rapid and weak. In favorable cases, the convulsions, if present at all, become less frequent and then cease and the tonic spasm gradually lessens. It may, however, be some weeks before muscle tone returns to normal and the rhesus sardonicus disappears. In fatal cases, paroxysms become more severe and frequent, death occurs from asphyxia due to involvement of the respiratory muscles, or from exhaustion, inhalation of vomit or pneumonia. Poor prognostic features are a short period from the time of injury to the onset of spasm under five days and the occurrence of convulsions within 48h of the onset of muscle spasm. Differential diagnosis. Hypocalcemic tetany characteristically affects the limbs, producing carpopetal spasm. Strychnine poisoning. Flaccidity occurs between convulsions, whereas in tetanus the spasm persists. Meningitis. Neck stiffness. Epilepsy. Hysteria. Treatments. 1. Prophylaxis. Active immunization. This comprises two initial injections of tetanus toxoid. Formal and treated exotoxin at an interval of six weeks. Booster doses are given at intervals of 10 years, or at the time of any injury. Toxoid should be given to any population at risk of injury, particularly the elderly in whom cover may have lapsed. Wound toilet. The risk of tetanus can be reduced almost to zero. If penetrating and contaminated wounds are adequately excised to remove all dead tissue and a course of prophylactic penicillin or erythromycin for penicillin sensitive patients is given. Antibiotic therapy is no substitute for thorough wound debridement. Passive immunization. This is done to neutralize the toxin. Patients who have previously received toxoid should be given a booster dose. If toxoid has not been given in the past, human tetanus immunoglobulin HTIG prepared from fully Immunized subjects should be given if the wound is heavily contaminated or is a puncture wound, and more than 6 H have elapsed before treatment is received. HTIG is insufficient to confer long-term immunity, and a course of toxoid should also be given. Curative treatment. Control of convulsions. The patient is nursed in isolation, quiet in darkness, and is heavily sedated. 
In severe cases, pharmacological paralysis with tracheostomy and mechanical ventilation is required and this may have to be continued. For several weeks, it is terminated when the spasms and rigidity are absent during a trial period without muscle relaxants, control of the local infections, excision and drainage of any wound is carried out under a general anesthetic, high-dose penicillin or erythromycin if the patient is penicillin sensitive is administered. Nutrition. Feed the patient by fine bore nasogastric tube to maintain the general condition and electrolyte balance.